testing along with the next session which is titled as OER and license. Actually, this is the need of our Funny. I will go out and say. So, need of the hour. What is this OER? Open educational resources, which is known to us. And what is this related with licenses? You can see most of the contents which are available you, when we give an assignment to uh, whenever we give an assignment to uh, to the children immediately it is becoming a redundant process whether it is a school whether it is a college or whether it is a university people run into Google. Quickly check into the question, type in the question, check into the answer, different answers. And very cleverly, people even go to the 100th search engine and then bring out that web page, open into it, and then start downloading it. And then rewriting it. So which I have given in the keywords here, reusing it, remixing it, revising it, redistributing it, retaining it. Yes, these are the steps done by most of the children from the school till their universities. And even uh, few of us also do it. What is wrong in it? We have a question. What is wrong in it? Is it right? Is it wrong? No. It is partially right, partially wrong? No. That is what we are going to discuss. So the scalability, because of more inventions. Community building is also there when we reuse, we remix, revise, redistribute, and retain. But our objective is going to be only one, which is the last one, continuous improvement. If you don't have a continuous improvement, we cannot survive in this environment, in the teaching field especially. I'm going to skip this video, but still you can observe. A few years ago, a professor taught a climate change course, reaching about 100 students per semester. One day he thought, If I could upload this course online, then not only would my 100 students have access to it, but others as well. So he did. And this is what happened. Anna sent the course's content across. Here you should understand very clearly what exactly happens as soon as a teacher uploads. As soon as the teacher prepares his own digital content and shares, this is exactly you have to understand. It's the country to Alex, who was studying climate change. Alex found it so interesting that he forwarded a copy to his friend Lulu in Africa. Lulu was developing peer-to-peer -peer courses with Philip. So they remixed the content with other resources and created a new course about the impacts of climate change in Africa. Alan. A participant in the course shared the content with Gabby, who was studying environmental policy in Latin America. Gabby brought the content to her class, and together they translated it into Spanish. After that, Gabby's professor shared it with his other classes. Myra, another student, shared the content with her father, who passed it on to his colleagues. Gabby's professor also forwarded the content to David, a colleague in the UK who was researching climate change. He updated some of the data, adapted it to his study, and published an article in an open journal. Researchers from all over the world were able to read the article. David sent the updated content back to the original professor. By then, his course had reached so many more people than his 100 students. Years later, many schools had begun to follow the example and open access to their content. Governments began promoting the use of open textbooks, and students began saving money on books. Other innovative universities began to open access to entire courses, making them available to participants from all around the world. These are open educational resources, teaching, learning, and research resources that can be reused, redistributed, remixed, and revised. 
Open educational resources are accessible to everyone. Learners, teachers, researchers, parents, workers, citizens, to you. This is open education. Knowledge as a public good. Everyone has the right to be educated, yet only a few have access to school. Open educational resources increase access to, improve quality of, and reduce costs of education. Sharing knowledge is important. Now you know, open educational resources give everyone the opportunity to learn. So now we should have understood uh, what are we focusing on. This is closely related with preparation of our own e-content. So open educational resource, the keyword was first made independently by this Richard Barnick. He was the founding of this particular OER, which is now renamed with the connections called as OpenStack CNX. So what is this open education resource talking about? It is a technology enabled open provision of educational resource for consultation use and adaptation by community of the users for non-commercial purpose. Please underline non-commercial purpose, which is being defined. This definition is defined by the UNESCO. OERs are digitalized materials offered freely and openly for educators, students and self-learners to use and reuse for teaching, learning and research, which you simply refer it as OECD. These are definitions actually. What is OER? We need not by heart this. We have to only understand. Whenever we talk about OER, only these keywords has to be understood. The first is technology enabled. The second is digitalized materials. And the third is it is open. Open to all. These three keywords are closely related. And the fourth important point is non-commercial purpose. What does this OER cover? What are the material? When we talk about materials or the contents, these are the contents that covers. Online textbooks, animations and simulations, all the PowerPoints, PDF files of lecture notes, diagrams, graphical materials, video recorded lectures, assessment questions such as tests. Even the MCQ for a chapter, if some teacher is preparing and it can, it is being uploaded and if somebody wants to use it with permission, they can use it, but you cannot copy it and use it. It is coming under the part of plagiarism, right? So why we need this particular OER? OER refers to learning materials. Again, I have given the list for your easy understanding because that was a very, uh, a global point of view, but here we have taken very crisp point. OER involves virtual labs. OER also involves interactive videos. It holds textbooks. It is using audio video lectures. It is having animations into it. Even the audios are coming under the category of OERs. Collection of journal articles, digital images, and the software tools. Software tools, we know. So what is the scope and what is the need? <clears throat> A quick uh, comparison. When we talk about scope, we have better learning outcomes. So that is why OER. As the components of OER is already known, revise, remix, reuse, all those options are coming under the components of OER. So in that point of view, we see the scope as better learning outcomes are there when we use OER. Excellent opportunity to learn from high quality top notch materials. Students motivation who can review the course material at their own pace and time. Because every, every child does not have electricity till in India. And every child does not have the technology to pursue their education system. So in that case, we should think OER uh, in offline mode, how it can reach. Faculty development and recognition is also done through OER. Provides learners with much improved access to quality educational resources. So see, these are, are simple glimpses of the scope. 
But where we need this OER or what is the need? When we use OER, we are going to have a wider access. We are going to give more resources as to the feeder channels as we have Diksha. When you create good e-content and the e-contents are even in the regional languages, then it can be submitted to the SERTs to, to further get uploaded into the Diksha channels. The productivity increases there. So this is one of the beautiful need of this particular OER. The scalability is there. Quick circulation, continuous improvement resources. This is not like this. Once you create a e-content on a particular title and it gets uploaded, you, you get a appreciation and the work stops there. No. We do ourselves go for continuous improvement of those resources using this OER. Earlier, I said a keyword called as components of OER. We also call the components as freedoms because we have the freedom of retaining a content written by somebody. We can even retain the originality of the content written by us. We can allow others to reuse it. We can allow others to redistribute. We can allow others to revise it. We can also permit somebody to remix it. So it depends upon the person how much they want to share their knowledge. But if you don't share your knowledge, then it becomes into the tacit knowledge. So tacit knowledge is not good for a teacher. A teacher, a professor, or a trainer should always have explicit knowledge. When we talk about explicit knowledge, we are going to read, we are going to prepare, we are going to work on many things, then we should share it. If you don't share it, then it is no use. What are the OER? We call them as elements. These are also referred as elements. Who are the people who are going to get benefit of this particular OER? The students reduce the cost of education because everybody is not having the same set of scenario. So in that case, for reduction of cost, this OER is going to be so helpful for the students. They also get more exposed to the wider range of digital learning opportunities. As far as teachers are concerned, you see it is having a supplement and added a value to the existing curriculum resources. Sitting in the house, a teacher whenever has a time can prepare his own content in which he is so confident on. He has read more content, he had more references, then he can sc scribble down the content into his own language or if he feels that some other teacher has prepared the same content which is going to be very easy for others then he can you want to add certain points you can add certain points into it with the same acclamation you can just upload it to the further usage and also professional preparation which is also going to have a continuous improved resources for the teachers then the third element of this particular oer is the parents who are going to have enhanced Opportunities for learning. Even uh, parents are uh, in the stage of uh, learning. You see, use, reuse and let others use. So this is the basic uh, fundamental ideology of this particular uh, of this particular thing. The hallmark of an uh, open education resource is uh, the freedom that you have. What are the five freedoms that we have seen just now, right? Based not only on creation, but adaptation and improvement on what's already out there. So this is another important. We need not create anything new every time. We need not innovate anything every time. We can just use existing things, right? For adaptation, improvement. So when a child does not adapt to our own teaching, then we should tune ourselves to give some typical new notes for his understanding. So in that case, we have to revise and improve the content. What are the different OER supporters in India? So these are available. You can see Swayam. You can see NPTEL. 
you can see NCT, you can see Shodh Ganga and also the NDL. So these are the quick references of OERs present in India. Then a question arises, what OER initiatives has NCRT taken? So these are, most of us know these things, but still it doesn't point out. So that is why we then and there have to point out what concept and component we have. So NCRT has e Patsala, Diksha, Nista, Swayam, ICT curriculum, PM, e Vidya. All these are pointing out towards the OER examples. You can see uh, 444 four, four ebooks are there. How many e contents are there? You can see how much this is there in Diksha. Diksha enables learning in 36 languages. NCRT Diksha to enable coherent access. You can see here. So OER search tools. What are the different OER search tools? These are the list. MIT open source, open, open source based uh, courseware. OASIS website, OER common website, Millard expert website, CC search website, OER dynamic search engine website. So what does this website do? What does this help us to do? When you click on the first one, it goes to a MIT open courseware where you find n number of subjects based on their course contents. You can refer those, you can revise, you can reuse, you can remix, but don't forget to use their own licenses before downloading, before copying, before reusing it. We are forced to look into one point, which is the license. So the license we are going to dis discuss in the forthcoming slides. So these are the search patterns. Because most of us know what is OER, but we do not know from where these contents are available. So these are the lists. So that is why these search tools are given. So what, where this OER is getting integrated with the teaching learning process? Teachers can make use of this in their classroom teaching. Teachers find subject area developed by other experts. These course materials can be customized to their student requirement based on the student, because student is the center. Keeping so a student centric, we can go for retainment, we can reuse it, we can revise it, re remix it and do the same with the proper permission. But most of us lose our time by means of not getting permission. So what are the different challenges in OER? Issue of quality and accuracy of the material are a concern because we go to the Google, we go with a certain web content, we download it, we start sharing it. The problem is accuracy and also the quality. OER also requires hardware and software technologies for the internet access. Still, it is a boon for most of the children. Language or cultural use may be a barrier to use because most of them are afraid of English language. So most of the content, whichever search tools that I have shown are based on English language. So in that case, the content which is available in a particular English language can be converted into a regional language. And then it can be modulated with the proper licensing such that it can be further useful to the children. We don't get any in incentive to update sustained material over time to be minimal because most of uh, the people uh, look for incentive. Why should I do it? Why this e-cutter should be given? No. Everywhere we cannot go for incentives, right? Incentives in the sense not money. Here incentive means in the name of appreciation. Lack of physical contact and interactive discussions may hinder some student. Right? So that is one of the learning uh, disability of the child. So is this a copy, is this a work covered by a copyright? Because just now I said you, if you download something before that, you should understand. You should check these things. That is what I've given here. Is this work covered by copyright? Yes. Is your intended use already permitted? For what purpose you want to download this or what, what purpose you want to use it? That should be very clear. Is your 
intended use is going to be a fair usage, then you have to get permission. Work you see this, is the work covered by copyright? Usme question kya hai, is the work eligible for copyright protection? Is the work in public domain? Yes, it should be yes. Is there a copyright exemption or exemption? These things you should know because if you don't know this, then you will get into the conclusion of legal, legal issues, right? So that is what we have to think about. Protecting technology. What do you mean protecting technology? In the earlier slide, we were talking about this legal usage. So we have to have certain license. When we talk about license, we are going to think about or talk about creative common license. So what is creative common license? What are the other public domain? You will see in the forthcoming slides. So before going into that, we should know what is this? IP plays a vital role. What is IP? Intellectual property. Intellectual property plays a vital role in technology transfer. Intellectual property involves what? Patents, trade secrets, trademarks, copyrights, and confidential information. What is IPR talking about? The rights of intellectual properties. Rights given to person over creation of their minds. Creator exclusive right over usage of creation of creation for a certain period of time. You can use somebody's idea for a specific duration of time. Protection of ideas is also part of IPR. Full benefit of one's invention, which you call it as a patent here. Filing for rights helps innovators protect their invention. Provide better collaboration and funding. These are just for your information. Because whenever we are going to touch the copyright and I, copyright and the license, IPR is part of it. So by means of Knowing what is IPR, we will go into it. Now you can see what is the three different trademarks which is commonly known to us. The first is your copyright. The second is your rights reserved. The third is your trademarks. All these are talking about preserving our own ideas. When we want to design, when we design, when we write something, we want to have the possessiveness saying that ye mera hai, then you should have all these copyrights. Works covered under uh, copyrights, you can see here literary, uh, literary including softwares, books, essay, compilation, comp computer programs, dramatic screenplay, drama, you can see sound recording, artistic, musical and cinematography. All these parts are coming under the category of copyrights. In general case, we are discussing. Material protected by intellectual property or copyright that school system might encounter include school ke environment may IPR or copyright kaam pe aega. curriculum material textbooks and other teaching resources her school ke alag alag software se apps se recommended apps se that are being provided by some of the private sectors some of the films videos and podcasts which is shown using YouTube are also based on copyright system Photocopying, scanning, downloading, screen captures, performance and screenings are all coming under the category of copyright with the context of education. Where this problem arises, why somebody uh, claims copyright? These are the hindrance accesses because this is the problem. Expensive for users. If a particular content is very costly, then people will go for breaking the copyright. Or it has only less access, then people will go for breaking it. Rebuilding the wheel, waste of time. Instead of uh, uh, instead of reinventing, reusing, remixing, and publishing with the same originality, you are going to sit and create a new content in the name of new content of your own without knowing whether it is existing or not, then it is going to be exactly waste of time. And the effort that you are taking is also somewhat little bit waste. And the resources that you are going to use for creating a new content, which is without going for a field study or without, without going for a literature survey, then it's going to be a waste, right? So that is also one of the point. Limited innovation, productivity and creativity for end users. You should always think about the student use. 
it's not the knowledge war between a teacher and a teacher it's a knowledge war between a teacher and a student because whatever we think whatever content we create that should be there in the mind of children's point of view so there this problem arises restricted access to the quality research data in journal articles demand based price controlling difficult for end whenever we talk about end users they are simply our own children the copyright works <clears throat> the first is fair use what is fair use the effect of use upon potential market for a value of copyrighted work should be also considered which means you can reproduce anybody's work you can reuse anybody's work but you should always stick, uh, stick to their license component number 2 strictly go for asking permission for usage of others it is always a best habitual process whenever you are going to use somebody's content you are humbly requested to seek permission from the owner or send a mail of authorization that i am using your particular content in this particular area or else wherever you are using it then and there put the source source colon the web link that from where you have used so that is symbolically representing the permission point of view the last is obtaining copyright better buying the license if it is going to be corporate based we are going to buy it or we are forced to buy it now coming to the concept of license license is also part of copyright and ipr right but here these license are permissions given by the copyright holder for their content copyright is still held by the creator in these cases but the creator also decide to allow others to use their work sometimes license are purchased and sometimes they are given freely by the creator 60% of the content are given free and because if you see the license are to be purchased if you say that the work that you are going to copy the work you are going to use you are going to write to the author saying that i am going to use this particular of content which is created by you and which i found in this platform to be reused for my own school children then 100% it will be free of cost unless or otherwise you are going to make money or financial sector based on that particular content so who is there based on what should i take a decision whether the content that i have downloaded is license free or a licensed one so the answer is given in the last creative commons is the most frequently used and accessible free licensing scheme we have to think into the content what are creative commons creative commons license are applied by the copyright owner to their works how do they do it the configurations are here four components what are they whenever you see cc by, uh, space by it points out to the cc will always represent creative common by will always represent this attribution required attribution required means you should say or define whose slide you have taken for example if you are going to download some of the slides from the internet and you are going to use it if you find uh, it is given as as soon as you download you find a instinct saying that you should have cc by by which means you are free to use it but you should say from whom you have copied or who is the owner of that particular slide should be mentioned so attribution required number 2 you see nc cc by nc which means you are you can use that particular content but it should not be used for commercial nd no derivative works you are not going to create anything from the existing for example you download a slide you want to change something and you want to publish it if you have option called as no derivative works you should not do it the last one essay share alike the license must be the same on the derivative works you should not change any the, any of the protocols right so the nd and sa components cannot be combined sa only applies to the derived derivative works right so you whenever you go through this slide you see the symbols here this is what the symbol whenever you download a content you have to go with this symbol 
If this symbol is there, you are talking about CC by BY. Just now you saw wherever you find the BY, attribution, attribution is required. Right? The next, you find CC BY by SA, which means what? You have to have a license. The license owner should be given attribution followed by adaptations must be shared under the same terms. You should not change anything. The original content should not be changed. However, you can add on to it. The third by NC. NC means no commercial. You cannot go for commercial. BY is there. So you can use it. As it is, you can use it. And also you should give appropriate authorization to the owner of the particular slide. And also you should not make money from that particular content. CC, BY, NC and SA. Now what is happening? Again, you are able to copy. But you should give attribute to the owner. You should not use it for money making, which you call it as no commercial area. And also you should not try to change anything. You should not try to change anything. And CC, BY, ND. No derivatives or adaptations for the work permitted. It is going to be cross combination. Anywhere this can be replaced. You have to just understand what is it. What is ND? No derivatives or adaptation of the work is permitted. You should not change anything. You can use more. These, these are the different combinations which I am showing you. CC, BY, NC, ND, which means attribution is required, no commercial and no derivatives. So when you have these particular different types of licenses, we have a concept called as public domain. What is public domain? Materials that are not protected by intellectual properties. So even when you uh, search for any of the image in a Google, always try to search a free download versions. Whenever, for example, you are looking into an image of NCRT, you type NCRT followed by file type free downloads. Then you can download many of the images and reuse it. Nobody is going to add it. So that is all called public domain. Public domain means you do not worry about anything, which you call it as free of cost. This public domains are referred as PDs. Please note this. When using works from the public domain, you do not need to credit the author, nor do you need to get permission. Now it is wise to cite your sources here. Yes, this could classify as a plagiarism. So in creative comments, now we are looking into the concept of public domains in which you are going to have the first as CCO. What is CCO? CCO is a public dedication tool which allows creators to give up their copyright and put their works into the worldwide domain. Whenever this type of license version you are seeing, this allows creators to give up their own copyright and put their works into the world, which means you have downloaded somebody else, you have modified and you are free to use it by your own name. You need not bother about the owner. CCO allows reusers to redistribute Remix, adapt, and build the material in the any medium or format with these conditions. So this is what uh, summary has been given here for your easy understanding. Whenever we are going to create any of the e-content, whenever we are going to download anything, we should see to that we are following this strictly. Most of the cre common creative platforms are going to have these types of environments, whenever you are going to do or use any of these websites, please do have a look on this particular creative comments. Uh, simple examples are given here. You can ask a question, can I apply or how can we apply for a CC? What is this common creative? If I have a PPT or if you have a e content, can I go for CC? Yes. Only the copyright holder or someone with express permission from the copyright holder can apply for a CC license or CCO to a copyrighted work. So just go through this. Excuse me, sir. Please we have, have a question. Have a question. Yeah. Uh, when do copyright expires? It has a stipulated period of time depending upon the type of document. You have an image, you have a video, you have an article, you have a... It depends from... 
you know, uh, it depends upon the type of document. For example, I have a patent which is valid of 20 years. So after 20 years, I should go for renewal of it. If I don't renew, it goes to the public domain. So when it goes to the public domain, anybody can reuse it or republish it where I could not have a claim on it. So depend upon the topic or depend upon the document type, the validity of the particular license holds on. So how do we apply a CC license? Choose a license that suits your needs and then communicate this choice because there we have a, a different platform for different document types. These are some of the references for your knowledge. So whenever you find time, you can just go through this. Any other questions? I hope I am. Uh, yes, sir. We have one more question. To take the license, we have to pay, sir. Uh, like we pay for patent right. You, for OER is concerned, no payment is required because it is open. You are only just authorizing that you are the owner of the particular content. It is open access. When you say open, so it, is, it means open access. If somebody is going to steal the content which you have downloaded, which you have created, then it becomes a loss for them. Here, when you say open access, it means it is free. You are not going to pay anything. You are going to just write a mail and then get their approval. I hope uh, I have just quickly gone through. However, please go through this uh, comparison chart. So the symbols are given here. What we have to do whenever we go for downloading anything, these symbols has to be understood. Either go by these symbols or go by these public domains. And the features are also given parallelly for your usage. So select it as per is, as per your requirement. So this is very much important whenever we go for downloading any content. Because once you have a content or when once you download a content, then further if you move on, then only this is possible. So one more query is also there. Uh, when we download the Python yes. to pay for pay licenses, we don't. When we download, before downloading, in the notes or the link reference, you should find out these licenses. Mostly in the PPTs, whenever whichever website you are going to use or for downloading, in those websites they would have given it in the note. These symbols would be there in the notes or the links. So there we should understand the owner or the creator of that particular content is using this public domain. If nothing is there, then it is open. Art. If nothing is there, then we should be very careful with the quality of the content. Because if a standard user or a teacher creates any of the content, he will by default use any of these licenses. If these licenses are not described in any of the web page or the place from where you are going to download any e content, then it is not a standardized domain. Please keep this in your mind. Any standardized e content will have this particular license domain. Seeing this only, we come to the conclusion yes, it is a branded. Yes, we can use it. Yes, we can reuse it by means of changing the Creative Commons license. I hope it is understood. Is there any other query? Does anybody want to ask any question? So, thank you so much, sir, for uh, giving us uh, explanation about the various open educational resources and give the detailed idea about the CC by SA, CC by NC. So I hope uh, this will definitely help the teachers and the students for their teaching learning process. So thank you so much.